It's the idea of a DVM versus an MD. The medical doctor in our country makes money when you walk through their door. And so when something's wrong, you go to the doctor, the doctor makes money. So it's a reactive, a reactive approach. Okay? Now, it was pointed out here in the back that with the veterinarian, especially in the farm animal strategy, what would happen to a veterinarian if they waited until the cows were sick and the milk was contaminated at the dairy before the vets got involved? They'd lose all their money. They'd lose all their money, right? The farmers would do what to those vets? They'd give them the boot, wouldn't they? Literally, we're talking cowboys, right? So they'd give them the boot, <laughs> okay? So, so with regards to veterinary science, especially if you're taking care of a huge farm, right? You've got a whole herd of beef cattle or dairy cattle or chickens or whatever it is, your job is to make sure the bad doesn't happen. So the vets have a very, very big incentive to prevent, right? Whereas the MDs have a great incentive to treat, right? Here the money is in the treatment. That's where the money is. It's after you're sick, we're going to prescribe, we're going to treat, we're going to do the surgery, whatever it is. That's where the money is for the MD. That's where the incentive is. There's not a lot of money in keeping you from getting sick because they don't make money till you come through the door. In this industry, especially in the farming industry, the money is in the prevention. It's keeping the herd healthy. This industry spent literally tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars researching and trying to find out how do you keep animals healthy. And all of our science that, com you know, that comes with, with how to prolong life was all done on testing for animals. And the veterinary industry has done it. Why do you think that dogs now live twice as long as they used to? Do you know an old dog used to be seven to ten years? That used to be an old dog. Ten years old, that was an old dog. Now, how long do dogs live now? Twenty plus. Yeah. You know, an old dog's 20 years old now. They've, we've doubled their lifespan. Well, where does that come from? Where, how did we figure that out? It's that prepackaged food. As Dr. Wallach talks about eliminating 900 diseases in the animal industry through the use of prepackaged food, making sure the animals get a perfect diet. Now, it's very easy to do that with animals because you can keep them in a pen or a cage <laughs> or, or whatever it is, and you control what food goes in, and, and you, control the, you control the inputs, you can control the outputs, right? With humans, it's a little bit different, right? Because if I take one of you and I say, okay, Gene, this is all you get to eat, all right? And, and I give him his prepackaged diet, and, and Gene goes out the door, and he's driving down the street. Now, he doesn't do this because he's a healthy bodybuilder, but let's suppose he's one of us, and he sees these golden arches. And what happens? And that prepackaged food finds itself in the back seat, and we're ordering off the menu. Okay? So it's very, very hard to control what we eat. And that's why vitamins and minerals and things that are the food for animals, for us, what do we call them? Supplements. Supplements. Okay? So for humans, we supplement our diet. Whereas for animals, we actually make it their meal. We make sure their meal has all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients, all the essential nutrients. And that's where this term comes from, essential nutrients. Okay? Dr. Wallach identified that there are essential nutrients for every single type of animal out there. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my, whatever it is, there is a list of essential nutrients. And what's an essential nutrient? Well, there's two things that have to be met. One is that it's a nutrient the body can't produce. Okay, so there's no way that that body on its own is going to generate that nutrient. They have to consume it. And then the second reason, the second item, is that if they don't get it, they get sick. If they're deficient in it, it's directly linked to a disease. So if, if there's a nutrient out there that meets those two criteria, we would call it essential. And the veterinary industry created a whole list for each different animal, what's essential. And Dr. Wallach said, wow, hey, this is cool. We can prevent and reverse diseases in animals by making sure they have all known essential nutrients. Well, if this works for animals, shouldn't it work for people? That was his philosophy. And so he went to work putting together a list of essential nutrients for humans. And based on all the research, did you know 
that there are 90 known essential nutrients for humans. Have you ever heard that from anyone else other than Dr. Wallach? No, no one else talks about it, right? It's something that makes us very unique. As Dr. Wallach says, we know there are 90 essential nutrients. So let's make sure that everybody gets them. And if you make sure in your diet you get all known 90 essential nutrients, then the body does amazing things. Give the body all the raw materials it has to have, and then all these amazing things happen. Well, that's the philosophy. And that's basically what he did. When no one would listen to him, he went and got licensed in the state of Oregon to practice medicine, hung up a shingle, and started treating his human patients like animals and giving them animal formulas. And he didn't have the fantastic products that we have now that taste good, that are easy to take. He was literally using horse pills and calf pellets. Okay, and he, these people were taking 30 pill, 30 big horse tablets three times a day. But the people got better. They got so much better that they would talk to their friends and they'd say, hey, if you're not happy with the doctor that you're going to, if you're not getting any better, you ought to go see old Doc Wallach. He'll treat you like a dog, but you'll get better. And that's how his popularity grew. I mean, just, you know, patience after patience after patience. His practice got so large, pretty soon he couldn't keep up with the demand. And he was, his information was so popular, he was asked to come and speak in different locations. And one of those lectures was given in Kansas City, and it was recorded. And that was the lecture that was titled, Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Based on the philosophy, I'm sure you picked this up at his lecture, that average doctor in America lives 20 years shorter of a life than the average American. And so his philosophy is, Dr. Wallach's philosophy is, if you get in a car accident, if you have something traumatic happen to your body, where do you want to go? You want to go here, right? Because you want treatment, right? You need treatment in that case. But when it comes to longevity, when it comes to preventing disease, these guys aren't living the longest in our population. So yeah, if you want to be sewn back up, you want to go here. But if you want to live a long life, if you want to prevent disease, you want to do what they're doing to the animals over here. And that's where this whole philosophy comes from. And Dead Doctors Don't Lie was just the title of that lecture that Doc gave years ago back in Kansas City. This quote right here, your need for the 90 essential nutrients expires when your need for oxygen expires. So when you no longer want to breathe, then you can stop consuming 90 essential nutrients. That's really the philosophy. And the idea is that if, if there's something that's essential, right, it's linked to a disease, our body can't make it, what do we have to do? We had a supple, supplement, right? Because it's not in our golden arches meal. Okay, so we have to supplement. When Dr. Wallach talks about 90 essential nutrients, let me lay them out here for you, what they are. Sixty minerals. 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and 2 to 3 fatty acids.